Um, we are, as I mentioned, a bunch of hands-on stuff. That's what's typically what we do. Um, but we wanted to bring some resources to you that you could use um, for remote learning. And we want you to be able to engage with them, get a good sense of what they are and how you might um, bring them into your classroom. Uh, you have, may not have got to see some of your fellow teachers very much recently. So an opportunity to collaborate um, with your peers um, and think about um, different ways that you might implement this in your classroom. And we've got uh, Curtis is teaching AP biology as well as biology. What are some different ideas that you um, might have uh, to do this? Uh, and just in general, I'm really hoping that today is useful for you, that you leave thinking, okay, I know what my next step might be in order to do this. Um, and hopefully it won't be um, um, terribly difficult. <laughs> so what we've done is, um, uh, depending on how much time you have, Don mentioned, um, it is a difficult time right now to teach remotely. So we've given you kind of two ways um, that you can do this. Um, there is a one week option that I'll share here. And working with Don, kind of the way we've set up the curriculum is that the first day of the week or the Monday is 35 minutes of synchronous learning. Um, and then your Wednesday, Friday block or Tuesday, Thursday block um, is 35 minutes of synchronous followed by 35 to 40 minutes of asynchronous learning. And we know each um, school might be doing something a little bit different, but in general, that's um, how um, the lessons and the resources are arranged. So if you have a week um, where you can do this, um, we do a, on day one, a basic introduction to biotech and um, we'll go in much more detail on, on all, all of these um, as we head into this. Day two, um, we get kids thinking about, oh, what kind of jobs can I actually do um, in biotech? Uh, what's out there? And they do this through, um, mostly through a website activity and exploration. And then on day three, um, we have what we're calling our biotech spotlights. Um, so um, it's conversations with people who are at different um, points in their pathway in the biotech um, industry or in research. And those are, are conversational and um, they're actually led by a student here in San Francisco, Ram. And we'll get to check out um, some of those a little bit later. So that is our um, one week option. Um, hopefully you, if you're looking to do um, something that might span two weeks, um, we'll have the same introduction you'll learn on in a minute. And then um, we get the students thinking about GMOs. They probably heard of it before, um, uh, but um, do a little learning around genetic engineering and bacterial transformation, like what it is. Uh, and then in day three, they'll actually do the lab um, as best we can in a remote way. And you'll see how we do that um, in a few minutes. Um, the following week on day four, um, we'll look at some sample results um, from the lab that we set up in day three. And this is really a synthesis day. So they'll look at their results, do some analysis, and then try and make meaning of, of, of the experiment and their results um, and everything that we've been doing. Um, related to, um, in this example, the bacterial transformation lab. We have some assessment tools we'll share with you there. And then days five and six are the same last two days. If you wanna just do this um, uh, um, for one week, um, those are the um, uh, same, same experiences. Um, but we feel like those would fit best at the end of the second week. Now, um, you can move these around however you want. You can do one thing a week, um, whatever works best for your classroom, but we wanted to share with you um, one way to do that. Okay, so what are, what are the resources that you have? So in your Google Classroom, you have the slides. Um, it's all one deck um, for the, basically for the entire two weeks. Um, the slides articulate with the student guide, which is what the students will be work, where the students will be making their observations and work. Um, um, and that's also in your uh, Google Classroom. And then we've also included a key to the student guide. Um, it's kind of a beta version, so we'll be cleaning it up and making it better, but um, um, it's there now if you need it. Uh, and just one quick point, these are all Google documents. Um, you have complete access to them. So if you make a copy, you can change it and edit it however you want to fit the needs of your classroom. Get rid of a slide, add a slide, add questions change the lexile of things. Um, so um, hopefully that'll be helpful for you as you move forward. 
All right, so we're gonna, um, one way to um, sort of keep uh, track of um, where we're at with these things. Um, in the slide decks, you'll see, and in the student guides, we, um, everything is sort of delineated by days. Um, so um, day one um, is uh, the, the first day um, that we do around what is um, biotechnology. So this is a synchronous learning day. Um, and our goals for this day is really to sort of activate their prior knowledge. Some of them might know a lot about biotech. Some of them might know nothing <laughs> about biotech whatsoever, but then engage them in an exercise um, where they start to think about what's possible um, with it. Um, and the last goal for this first day is to kind of synthesize a group understanding of, okay, here's what we think biotech is. And so I wanted to um, walk through um, very quickly um, what this might look like. Um, so this is the um, slide deck here and the student guide, oops, let me go back up to, we're getting a preview of everything here. Um, this is where they'll capture um, their responses from, um, from the slides. And so after we sort of get them going about what they think biotech might be, um, we uh, engage them in uh, a question of, do you think this is possible? So we share four different biotech companies and ask them whether or not, just based on their hunch, based on do they think that's possible, whether it's real or not. So in this first example, Wonder Alpine, snow skis made using biomaterials from algae, um, you know, often the green stuff that's growing in lakes. And then we ask them, okay, you think that's real? Yes or no? Just kind of your best guess. Now, if I was doing this, you know, we're doing this on Zoom with kids, then um, I could do a poll and we could kind of see where the class is, you know, on Wonder Alpine. And then we go through um, each of these four. Then we, um, uh, go ahead and, oops, that's the, do the reveal. Um, so spoiler alert, they're all real. Sorry, I just had to put that in there. Um, and each one has a little more information about um, the company itself. So um, uh, this Wonder Alpine, it's a two minute video um, that talks about this process where they can make these biomaterials from algae. Um, so it's very cool. Um, oops, which we're not going to watch. <clears throat> Um, it also includes kind of some overall schema for how they're making their product using biotechnology. And this is a, this theme here is something you'll see that comes up over and over in um, our uh, lessons as, uh, as we move forward. The last one here, I'm, I'm hoping that, um, um, I think that a lot of kids will know about Impossible Burger and things like that. Um, this video here is about three minutes long. It does a nice job explaining how um, they utilize heme, which is a um, protein that, um, so they, if you don't know, Impossible makes meatless meat um, from plants. Um, and they engineer using the heme protein that I guess makes meat taste like meat. I'm sorry if that's gross to you vegetarians out there, but it's an interesting story at the least. Um, so we're kind of engaging them in like what's possible. Um, and then we uh, transition to um, something that they may um, really know something about. Um, diabetes is a story or something that lots of kids and families have experience with. So we start by asking them, um, do you know somebody who has um, diabetes? Um, you know, and, you know, we get called back, yes, and so oh, sometimes they have to give themselves something. What is it? They'll say, oh, they give themselves insulin. Oh, okay, where does the insulin come from? Walgreens. Okay, where, do, where does it, <laughs> well, that, that insulin you get at Walgreens or the um, pharmacy, where does that come from? Can we grow it in the field like lettuce or potatoes? Um, uh, and we, you know, come to this idea that, no, we have to get this insulin from somewhere. And actually, this is an example where biotechnology um, is a way that we can make um, insulin for people who need it. Uh, and it's an example of medical biotechnology. Um, and it's one of many areas of biotech that we'll be learning about um, this week. So <clears throat> this is kind of where you get to your first decision as a teacher. Um, so this is the synchronous part. Um, we're trying to end of the day with, um, all right, well, we've kind of learned a little bit about biotech. 
um, can we come with kind of a, um, a group, um, you know, uh, definition of what it is. Now you can either give them one. <laughs> so here's our operating one. Biotechnology uses our understanding of biology to make useful products for society. Certainly it involves chemistry, biochemistry, and all that other stuff. But, you know, let's just shout it out to the biology folks for right now. Um, so you can just sort of give that to them and have them um, fill that out in their student guide here, have them use their own words um, to describe it. Um, or if you have time, um, do a group activity. Um, so we've included a Jamboard here, um, which um, I'm certain some of you have used or use regularly. Um, and you can um, pre-populate the group to yourselves, um, or you could just have kids, um, you know, three or four kids take control of a board um, and then work through these prompts. So um, you can send them to their breakout rooms. I've included a little example here. So if we're thinking about biotechnology, what images come to mind? Um, and maybe they can do a net search and just kind of grab some images. Um, here's where you can add an image um, and pop them in here. On the student guide, um, we've linked um, the slides from the day so they can use those images um, if they want. Um, and then um, can you try and put this in your own words? So, uh, all right, based on what you've learned today, Trina, um, she can put this on her post-it and then maybe come up with a group definition. Um, and depending on how much time you have, then um, come back um, as a whole group um, and um, make up your, you know, use one of the group definitions that you like better than this, that's still, you know, factual, um, or uh, just give them the same one and they have them fill it in here. Um, and they can pull some of the, the words from their own post-it notes and put them in here as well. Um, so that sort of takes us um, to the end of um, day one. And um, so it's shared a lot. Um, so this is our first day. And so um, what we wanted to do was um, give you a chance to um, uh, meet and talk with some of your peers. So um, for day two, uh, our goals for this day um, are to get students to start thinking about what they may already know about GMOs. Um, they've probably heard of a GMO before. They may know absolutely nothing about it, and that's okay. We want to activate their knowledge about it. Um, and then um, get them to understand what a GMO is, um, but then also that we can use genetic engineering um, in order to make a GMO. Um, and at the end of um, day two, we're gonna introduce this idea that we're in this lab gonna make our own genetically modified organism um, using a technique or a process called bacterial transformation, um, which is a type of genetic engineering. So those are um, our goals for uh, day two. Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go through all the slides here um, that they go through. Um, they're going to be answering these um, prompts in their um, student guide. Um, just a note about um, the slides themselves. So I've included a narrative for every slide. So this is really meant for anybody who's never done biotechnology at all. Um, every slide has um, prompts that you can um, that you can use to narrate. Now I know you guys can all talk through this on your own, but it's there if anybody wants it. Um, including, um, you know, um, because there's animations when you might click. Um, and so if you have students go through the slides on their own, which um, you absolutely could, um, you could see this looks kind of confusing. Um, I recommend that they watch it in um, present mode um, so that they can get a sense of um, uh, the animations um, and the sequence here. So after introducing um, our, you know, a GMO and genetic engineering, um, we come to kind of the central theme really of this lab. What are we doing here? Um, and so we're taking um, E. coli and we are introducing um, this gene, it's DNA um, from a jellyfish that codes for green fluorescent protein. If the transformation is successful, that bacteria will express that protein and we can see it. 
Um, now, I know a lot of you have lots of experience with this, but um, just in case you haven't, that's this is um, sort of the, the money part of this we're hoping they can understand. It's also a really great opportunity to either introduce um, or talk about the central dogma of molecular biology, um, where we're going from a gene to mRNA to a protein um, to a trait that's expressed. Um, you may not go into the mRNA part at this point, but there's lots of different examples during these resources that show that central dogma in, in, in different ways, like including the insulin one that we um, showed and, and, and many others. So um, this, you know, this slide here shows up um, in different ways a number of times. So bacterial transformation is um, really introducing new DNA um, into um, the bacteria and then the bacteria expresses that trait. So if for ninth graders, if I can get them to understand that this DNA is going in here <laughs> and then we're making a protein and we can see that, um, that's a little win um, for us. Um, and so this is a big part of, of what we're um, doing. We do have to um, put that gene onto something called a plasmid first. So the plasmid is a circular piece of DNA and you can see here, um, um, this plasmid, which is called Peewee, has two different genes, um, the GFP um, and the um, ampicillin resistance gene. I'm not going to talk a lot about the ampicillin resistance gene today. Um, this is a place where lots of kids struggle with their understanding of this. Um, so you'll have to make a decision as a teacher um, how much of this you want to try and share with them, because um, it, can, it can be difficult. Um, the, the long and the short of it is that the bacteria um, is able to live in the presence of the antibiotic ampicillin um, if it has this gene in it. Okay, um, so that takes us to um, the end of uh, day three. So we end up um, going through um, what bacterial transformation is. Um, and then um, introducing this idea of a plasmid. Now for the asynchronous work, we have a couple of different resources here. Um, if they um, click on these, um, they will make a copy or they'll be asked to make a copy of it so that they could just uh, fill it out and drop it in your Google Classroom. I think I would reverse these two. This vocabulary guide um, is a useful tool um, to get kids reviewing some of the things we've talked about um, and then making up their, their own sentences, they can make a Quizlet with it. Um, and then um, we do have some background reading here. Um, again, going back over some of the things that we have been talking about these first um, couple of days. Uh, and you wanna take a look at the background reading and check out the Lexile. You might wanna um, take, you know, we've written it with, um, you know, uh, ninth grade students up through 12th in mind. So if you think it's something that your students can do, or you might want to excise some of it, um, and there are um, um, questions in here for the students uh, to answer uh, as well. And so that's, uh, um, that's something that we think that feel that they can do um, again on their own. And so that um, gets us through um, the end of um, the second day. Any quick questions on day two? I know I'm throwing a lot at you. <laughs> so appreciate your, your patience. Okay, so um, for uh, day three then, um, this is all about the bacterial transformation lab. Um, so um, what we want them to get out of day three is how are we gonna set up this experiment, right? Um, and then based on how we set it up, we want them to make some predictions. What do you think is gonna happen uh, when we come back after, um, after we do the experiment? And then the third part is the actual bacterial transformation. How do you do it? Um, and showing them um, uh, how, to, how to actually um, do that piece of it. Um, so you'll see, you know, these are basically review from day two, you know, those things are not super innate for kids to understand, so we just go back through them. As you can see here, we have a couple of animations that really walk you through 
antibiotics, antibiotic resistance. So this one here is animated. Um, and again, this will be a choice for you as a teacher, how much of this you want to share. If you think it's just going to confuse them, um, but if you walk through it yourself, you'll get a good sense of that. Um, but I'm not going to go through that in detail um, today. Um, so we want to spend some time talking about, okay, we are going to set up our experiment now. So I have the prompts um, uh, here in the slide where you can um, uh, talk through it with them. I would probably go to the student guide with them and walk them through how this is set up. And for those of you who um, haven't done this before, I wanted to quickly um, share this, okay? Um, so um, on this side of our experiment with the back, this bacteria, <clears throat> we are not introducing any DNA. So they are not getting that plasmid, okay? Um, and we're gonna put that bacteria on two different types of plates. So um, the first plate is um, LB auger, and you can ex we have a picture of an auger plate here, which is basically kind of like hard jello. Um, and when it's liquid, we can add things to it. So if you add LB to it, which is, it said food for the bacteria, it's basically sugars and amino acids. Um, um, bacteria like that, um, they need it in order to grow. That's the first type of plate. And the second type of plate, we're going to add LB, um, but we're also going to add the antibiotic um, ampicillin. Uh, and so kids might be asking, why would you do that? <laughs> and we're gonna try and figure this out with the experiment, okay? On, with these bacteria here that we are transforming, they are getting that plasmid, we can see it here, to try and get it inside. Um, and we're gonna plate them on the same um, two types of plates. So these bacteria, um, we will be transforming, okay? Now, having gone through all of that um, and how we're gonna set it up, we wanted them to make some predictions. Um, so um, here's our table. Here's our two different bacteria without the plasma DNA and with the with DNA. Um, and we, here are three sample results. Plate number one, no bacteria. Plate number two, this is a one, which is a lot of bacteria. And then plate number three, we call these colonies and they're glowing green. So um, we're gonna ask the kids to come down to this table here and uh, make a prediction about which one of these three plates do they, do they think this bacteria growing on this LB plate would happen and then to explain the results. Um, so the last part of day three is, okay, how do you do bacterial transformation? Um, and the best way that we could think of doing this remotely, save for doing it in your mad scientist shed um, for them, is to um, show them some of the equipment um, and then actually um, to watch a point of view video that we made um, and then um, ask, have them answer some questions as they go through it. So um, I am uh, seconds of it. Um, but just so you get a, a sense of what they'll be doing um, for this part. four basic parts of doing bacterial transformation, and we'll walk through them together. Now, if you were doing this lab at school, you'd follow protocol, which is a specific set of instructions for different lab procedures. Instead, we'll share some short videos and images to help you get a sense of what needs to be done for each step. We'll start with our stock of E. coli bacteria. This is what we're trying to get our plasmid into so that we can make the green fluorescent protein. We use this inoculating loop to swipe across the top of the agar, get a little bit of bacteria off there. We're gonna put this in a tube labeled plus DNA. Now inside of this tube is calcium chloride. We're gonna stab and twizzle and make sure we get the bacteria off of the loop and into the calcium chloride. Uh, so that really, um, you know, just from that first, um, you know, screen alone, that go through the main, um, the main steps, um, and then the equipment, and then what we put down here was some questions chronologically that they will um, go through um, in the lab, um, and that they have to answer. We put timestamps in here. You can take those out. You can add more questions. Um, we had listed this as something they could do asynchronously, but certainly something you could do um, as a whole class. That video is about 10 minutes long. 
um, and um, really takes you through all the all the steps um, um, for um, completing the lab. And so that takes us through the end of day three. Uh, day four. Um, and um, we have notes for this day here in the PowerPoint section for teachers as well. Um, day four, pretty straightforward. Um, we're coming back from um, our experiment, um, our bacteria were in our incubators overnight, and we're going to be looking at and making observations and um, analyzing our results. Um, so that's a big part of the day. Um, and then this is also a big synthesis day where um, we want the students to try and make meaning of their experiment um, and really based on all the learning they've done up to this point and try to be able to communicate what they know um, through a couple of different um, uh, assessment tools. So, um, the students have these slides in their student guide as well. I wanted to share with you um, the two different sets that we have. So as you can see, what we named is that eight out of 10 lab groups got the following results. Um, and then in the second set, two out of 10 um, got these results here. Um, the reason we wanted to do two sets, oops, excuse me. The reason we wanted to do two different sets of results is to not communicate to the kids like, oh, this works, science works all the time, um, right? But to have them um, really look at um, two, different, um, two different outcomes. So um, if you've not done this before, I'll share quickly with you how you might um, do this with students. Um, so um, these um, are the same plates here as they are here. Um, these ones um, are being hit with ultraviolet light, which is why they're lighting up um, these ones here. But let's start with the bacteria that we did not um, introduce any DNA to. We did not give that P kiwi plasmid into that bacteria. So how did it do on the LB plate? It grew very well. Okay. How did it do on the plate that had LB and antibiotic? Um, there is no growth here. This is a little condensation um, or something, but that is not bacteria. So that's important for you to point out to the kids. So lots of growth, no growth. How about the bacteria that we did transform with the P kiwi plasma? Well, they also grew on the LB plate, um, but as you can see here, um, it, they were able to grow on the LB ampicillin plate. Um, and so, if you wanted to, it's an opportunity for you to talk about how having that ampicillin resistance gene is an example of selection um, and being able to um, select as a marker. Um, you may not wanna go there, um, but then um, of course you can see under ultraviolet light um, that they're expressing the GFP. Now on this set of plates, um, we have the same growth pattern for the bacteria that we did not give the DNA to. Um, it was on the transformed bacteria. These ones, um, some of them were able to grow, but then we didn't have any growth here um, on this plate here. So essentially this transformation did not work. And if you've done this with students in real life, this happens a lot, <laughs> okay? So this reality, this is reality in the classroom where we get some like this and some like this, okay? Um, so you can uh, walk the th students through that. Um, and then they'll be um, uh, capturing their results, describe what they just saw. The results are here too for them, okay? Um, then we ask them to go back to their predictions. Hey, were they right? Um, or um, why or why not? Um, and then we had two different sets here, right? Um, so, um, they could go back to the lab video and think about possible sources of air for why the transformation didn't work. Okay. Um, now in the final part of um, day four, um, we're going to be trying to make some meaning of what happened here. Um, so we've given you a couple different options. You can use one of them. You can use all three of them. You can use none of them. Um, for, with your students. Uh, the first is making a scientific model after they um, fill in some prompts 
about um, what they did in the lab. They can um, draw this on a separate piece of paper and turn that in. And again, they can do um, these parts on their own, so the asynchronous part. Um, we've included an opportunity to construct an explanation. I dropped in a couple of, of comics that kind of play with this idea of making a GMO. So in this bottom one here, you may have to explain to the kids what a tree sapling is, but basically they introduce a skunk gene into the tree sapling. And of course that tree is now smelling like a skunk. He's not very happy about it and wants to cut it down, right? So um, we say, hey, can you explain this comic? I'm using some of the same starters. Of course, they have to make a few things up. What's the name of the skunk gene and things like that. But it is a way for them to demonstrate their understanding. If you're more looking for a more straightforward way to do this, um, they can write a paragraph using cause and effect um, language and sentence frames and the vocabulary. This could be a good place for them to go back to their vocabulary guide that I showed you earlier um, and uh, um, scratch this out here. Um, so those are the assessment tools we can do after the uh, um, uh, analysis. Um, any questions um, about day four? We're gonna jump into day five um, um, next. Day five then, um, we're moving into careers in biotechnology. Um, so, all right. Well, what, what we're hoping to do with this way is this day is to have them think about um, some different areas of biotech that exist. Um, then actually look at some local biotech companies like, hey, what's going on right here in the Bay Area? Um, and then um, actually to look at actual jobs. Um, and so the first part of the synchronous part of the learning day, day um, is to share some examples of uh, areas. So vaccines, very much um, uh, uh, something that we're all concerned about right now um, in the area of my medical biotechnology, um, um, but also um, introduce a couple of different areas that you can go through with the students. Um, uh, and again, they'll be filling this, um, responding to these prompts here. Um, so this is kind of introducing different areas and more examples of biotech products. And then for the asynchronous work um, for the day, um, they're gonna be um, mostly, um, sorry, we introduce it here and have you jump over to the student guide. Um, for the asynchronous part of the day, they're gonna be um, using this uh, website, biotechcareers.org. Um, and we have them start here in um, biotech companies. Um, and this is uh, the prompts on the student guide. Um, they'll ask them questions like, which state has the most biotech companies? Hopefully they'll click here on this middle one. And it's a pretty cool little interactive where they can um, um, then um, drill down into different regions. And so the student guide asked them to look at um, uh, biotech companies in San Francisco as a starter. And then it asked them to find um, uh, biotech companies in San Francisco that they're interested in learning more about. Um, and so it's uh, a quick search that they do um, with regards to um, companies um, here in the um, United uh, in California. But also we asked them to look for some companies outside of California and um, share a little bit about what they do. From there, um, they'll go and um, look into different job areas and that will take them to um, a page like this, which is pretty cool. There's lots of different things that um, students can um, um, check out. It will then prompt them to um, look for different types of jobs you can do within this area um, and to choose one that they want to learn a little more about. And here they'll, in their student guide, they'll capture, okay, well, how much do you make um, hourly or yearly? The different types of area this job um, is also can be done in. 
it talks of course a little bit about what the job they do in the job and then um, what education and training is is required for that um, so for a lot of these um, positions, you um, need an associate's degree, which um, there are a lot of community colleges that have programs where students can complete and enter the workforce um, without a four-year degree. Um, so the, um, excuse me, I'm gonna head back here. And the last part of the career exploration um, has to do with uh, profiles. So then they could um, actually learn from someone who is actually working one of these jobs. Um, and so um, if you want to know more about marine science technician, um, you get to meet this person. They talk a little bit about their job, um, a little bit about their education. So this example here, she talked about um, getting a base credential. Um, uh, which is something you can do at community college um, as well. Uh, and so that, this is uh, um, work I think students can do on their own asynchronously. Um, it's, it's an interesting introduction to um, lots of different things that are out there for biotech. For um, all six days of biotech week, we are almost done. Um, this last piece, our, our biotech um, spotlight, um, and as I shared at the top, um, we wanted to um, have some people's story, some people share their stories about their journey um, in terms of their education and working in biotechnology. Um, and so um, we think that's important for kids to connect and, um, with um, all the things that we're, are, we're doing here. We'll look at some examples in a minute. Um, but we also, as you'll see, um, we want them to see some next steps beyond high school that they could take. Um, so obviously a four year education is really important and something that we want to encourage all of our students to consider. Um, however, um, there are a lot of programs um, at the community college level um, that can get students um, jobs, um, good jobs, um, good wage earning um, jobs um, with a two year degree and with some cert certifications. So we actually share a little bit here about how they might think about doing that. Um, so let's jump over to the student guide, back to the student guide. Uh, and um, our first biotech spot spotlight um, is a person named uh, Jennifer Hernandez. Um, she grew up here in the Bay Area um, and you know she shares her story um, and we'll watch just a little bit of it together um, <clears throat> where she went to community college, uh, transferred to USC, uh, came back to the Bay Area um, and then actually, um, because she got her um, uh, bio, biotechnology technician certificate, was able to get a job at Amaris, um, which is in Emeryville, um, and actually um, is finishing her four-year degree at UC Berkeley, um, um, using, um, actually using her job as a way to pay her way through getting her four-year degree. Um, but her experience and her story is a really interesting um, one. Um, and as you can see here in the student guide, we have some questions um, that um, go along with the video. Um, the, the videos are all about 10 minutes or less. Um, so I thought we'd watch uh, just a couple of quick segments from Jennifer so you get a flavor of how we um, set up the videos. Okay, let's do this. Alrighty. Um, hello, uh, my name is Ram. Uh, I am a high school student in San Francisco and uh, I am a senior and I hope to go to college next year, hopefully in the Bay Area. Hi Ram, nice to meet you and congratulations on being a senior. I know that was a very exciting year for me, um, but yeah, my name is Jennifer Hernandez. I grew up in Berkeley, went to all Berkeley schools. Can you share a bit about how and where you grew up and you know school what, what school was like for you and um, you know in Berkeley? Yeah. Um, so I yeah, I graduated from Berkeley High in 2014. High school for me was horrible, you know. I was not getting good grades, you know, I wasn't I was just more focused on other things. School wasn't my priority during that time. My dad was deported. I had to make up money somehow to make that income, you know? And yeah, high school was just, wasn't really 
a good experience, but community college came around and that was like my second chance, you know, to redeem myself because I knew I was smart. So um, this is a really interesting conversation. This um, Ram is the student who does all three of our biotech spotlights. He's a senior here in San Francisco. He does a great job. Um, and um, one of the things he, he asks all three of our speakers um, is, um, well, what advice would you have for someone leaving high school? Now, I know we have a lot of, um, this will be primarily for freshmen, but I think what each, all three of the speakers share is, is interesting. So I thought I'd catch the end of Jennifer's here and hopefully you get to watch the whole thing. So talking about like, if it takes you longer than four years traditionally, then that's fine, you know? instead of just cramming it all in four years. Like, why do we have to do it traditionally? You know, mostly as women of color and people of color, like this is a new world to us. You know, like we should take it at our steps. You know, we occupy, we should occupy that space. And I recommend that too, when you go to college, occupy your company, I mean, your, your, your campus, because you're going to be probably a small percentage and Occupy it, get everything you can from that school. Yeah, I will. Well, I just wanted to say thank you for having us. This was really informational for me and I'm sure it will be informational to the rest. Yeah, thank you. So Jennifer does go on to talk about um, good experiences that she had in high school. She participated in a program where she was doing biotech um, in high school, which led her to do it in community college. Um, one of the cool things is at Amaris, um, she um, uh, works with a genetically modified yeast that produces squalene. Um, <clears throat> you may not know what squalene is, I didn't before she shared, um, is uh, a compound that is commonly found in shark livers. Um, and unfortunately they harvest a lot of sharks and their livers to get the squalene that's used in hand creams and moisturizers and face creams. Um, but the nice sort of symmetry is that, you know, she talks about um, how they're able to use this genetically modified organism to make it just like, you know, so many of the examples that we're, we're, we're doing here. Um, so um, uh, before, well, the next, the next step after um, Jennifer's video, um, I mentioned um, different programs um, in community colleges that kids could think about. And in fact, they could start to take some classes in high school um, and both of these examples at the City College of San Francisco and Laney College in Oakland. Um, so there's um, short introduction videos here for their programs. Um, and we have the kids answer some questions. Um, I really like the Laney one. They did a really nice job um, sharing about their program. Featuring, as you can see, our speakers, it's a diverse group of people with a diverse number of places throughout their biotech careers. Um, and so um, this is a nice way for kids to start thinking forward um, about what uh, they might want to do after high school. Up next for day six, <clears throat> um, Baybeck has included some um, a student survey. Um, um, it's very important for us to get feedback from kids about the impact this may, this um, experience may or may not have on them. Also for our stakeholders, so we can share like whether or not this is having impact for kids. This is a Google form that will probably take them about two minutes to do. If you can make it mandatory, that would be awesome. Um, it is here in the student guide, so hopefully they'll, they'll do it here. Um, and then we'll move on to our last two biotech spotlights. This is Tom uh, Tubone, who is a professor at the uh, University of Madison, Wisconsin. Um, he's also a professor at Madison Area Technical College. So he also works for a community college, um, working in the certificated programs um, that we've been talking about. Um, very interesting um, story. Um, grew up in San Diego, spent some time at the NIH. So we have the kids like, hey, what is that? Um, uh, learning a little more about that. Um, he works in stem cell and regenerative medicine um, research. So he has an interesting story about growing king crab um, artificially. Um, and so um, that's another way we can engage the kids. And our last um, biotech spotlight is Dr. Jillian Silva, um, who is at 
UCSF here in San Francisco. She is a professional researcher. That's her title. Isn't that cool? Um, and um, this of the three, this one has a lot more content in terms of like the molecular biology of what she does. Um, she works in cancer um, and she um, works on signaling pathways. Um, and so um, the video that we have for her is about eight minutes long. And she starts um, to talk about and has the present, she has a slide deck where she presents um, the pathway that she's working on. Um, this is really interesting. Um, it, that part's a little bit longer. So we made this an eight minute video. And then as you go through some of these questions down here is the longer um, explanation for her cancer research. So I will say that this part is probably gonna be hard for some ninth graders, but if you're um, teaching AP or another class, um, yeah, they, can, they can probably delve into it. But you could break it down if you wanted for interested ninth graders or the whole whole class. If they might need some help with this last part here, is is what I'm saying. 